Hello everyone. Welcome to Coming Home, Survive and Thrive in Homeschooling. Today we are talking about what humanity's needs are and why homeschoolers may be the ones who do it. Homeschoolers are in a privileged position of being able to shape their educational years according to needs and personal giftings. You have the inclination, time and opportunities to explore in-depth learning outside of normal studies. Here are some of the ideas I have rounded up and it's just a starter list. Start thinking of what does humanity need to have in the future? Where are the gaps in mankind's needs and what are the ideas to explore those gaps? Secondly, AI. There is an unknown future in the beginnings of AI. Thirdly, is your child gifted in languages? Perhaps steering him towards ancient languages for translation of the abundant tablets and scrolls unable to be processed because of the lack of trained scholars. What are we missing from our understanding of history because of this lack? Fourthly, cold fusion and other new energy sources. This is going to be crucial over the next decades and I'm not referring to stopping fossil fuels for renewable energy. Fifthly, medical advancements in genetic therapy. For example, type 1 diabetes. How do we tell a body to turn on a failed ability? or heal a broken or faulty genetic combination. Next, entrepreneurial abilities and wealth building, creating generational wealth and freedom from debt. This includes learning both orthodox and, more importantly I think, contrarian financial knowledge. And seventh on my starter list, Positive environmentalism, which doesn't treat mankind as just another species. The current environmentalist trend seems to hate humans and want less of us. It's a death cult. Positive environmentalism is the opposite. We can turn the apocalyptic attitude around without destroying the planet as we're being assured is currently the case. That's a podcast series in itself. Hold my beer. This list is a smidge of what it could be. I'm sure I will add to it, and I'm equally sure you could too. Parents, work hard to give your children opportunities to learn how to think and not what to think. Those who know how will be the ones to progress humanity and help save us from the downward spiral in the West. So, how do we do this? Firstly, you can find mentors to inspire and teach lost or disappearing knowledge. Secondly, seriously consider moving away from prescribed curricula and design your own curricula centred on the strengths of your child and their unique opportunities. It's hard to suddenly pivot to an opportunity if you're worried about getting behind in the bookwork. This is one of the reasons why I like homeschooling applications such as the Charlotte Mason approach and perhaps veering towards including an unschooling approach when necessary. These approaches create the flexibility to adapt when appropriate. It truly is the privilege of homeschooling. Planning is still involved and there are still non-negotiables in your child's education, but let it be the foundation rather than the superstructure of the education. Third, cultivate an Oxford tutoring mentality in your homeschooling journey. 
That is, assigned readings during the week and detailed discussions with the tutor of ideas learned at the end of the week. This doesn't have to be the parent, but it will only enhance your understanding of all kinds of things. Well-chosen mentors or tutors are around. The Oxford approach tends to happen in small groups, so sharing a fee makes this idea more likely to happen. Please note, this doesn't replace written work, but goes together with oral work. The students are discussing ideas and what they have written during the week. And my last idea of implementation is understand how aristocratic families raise their children. A key part of their education is learning to network and becoming the kind of person others in the network can rely on for anything at any time. An aristocratic education really does treat the world as the classroom. In fact, there is quite a bit of overlap between how the noble class teaches its children and the goals and systems of homeschooling. Wrapping your head around this can be difficult for working class and middle class people like us, at least without becoming angry or resentful. But the success of the aristocracy isn't luck, and we can and should learn some tricks from them if we try. After all, as homeschoolers, you have the time and the flexibility. More and more, universities are not the places for these discoveries needed. Do we need alternative learning centres and philanthropists to fund them? When I was writing this podcast, I searched for where Elon Musk talks about curiosity. He says to encourage curiosity. He calls it obsessive curiosity. Curiosity is not often encouraged for students coming through the school system. Beneficial curiosity is holistic and decoupled from acceptable lines of thought and subjects, which is probably why it's not taught in public schools. Why is curiosity so important? It confers plenty of personal and family benefits, but more importantly, it creates the kind of people who become a genuine benefit to mankind and, rippling out from that, to the rest of the world, or in the current vernacular, the wider environment. We need families who understand this, to design their homeschooling journey, to leverage the good deeds their children may be able to enact in our world. Humble guidance and steering not the dysfunctional training of our children for our own pride. Musk also talks about how physics is the law and everything else is recommendation. Physics is thinking from a first principle standpoint. Then he said to aspire to be less wrong over time. Well... That's worth implementing in my life. The fourth point from his interview I'm including today is to make educational tools relevant so your brain remembers. For example, take apart an engine or a machine and put it back together and then you'll know what and why the tools you need to learn are important. Your brain retains this information. This could be a literal machine, but it also applies to other aspects of our homeschooling. He also speaks directly to education. It will inspire you as you put into practice what I'm talking about today. And as a bonus to us, he included a mini book list. I'll put the link to this interview from 2022 in the description box. We need to take the risk of shaping education 
for specific possibilities, only to have the grown student turn away from the path. That's the risk. We also need these families to consult with homeschooling specialists to bring accountability, a sounding board and wise mentoring. The more people band together rather than go it alone in a Lone Ranger style family, the more likely we can each recognise talent amongst our children, offer good ideas and spread the word about the best mentors. Yes, and help out with money issues. From a Christian worldview, this approach is akin to mission work and understanding that our everyday actions can veer us towards God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This topic is something I've been thinking about for a while. I truly believe homeschoolers are in a unique position. And there are those of us who have the understanding and vision to make long-term plans in the hope that our child will be just like one of the historical figures we are grateful for today and may just have the pleasure and pride of seeing that happen. If you do want to talk about this more or consult with me and think these ideas through as to how you can apply these in your situation, please contact me regarding a consultation. You can find my contact in our web store, which is cominghomeinfo.com. I hope you have a really good week. Bye for now.